So we are going to do a relatively fast flow today. However, despite the fact that I say fast flow, you never want to be moving faster than you can breathe. So if you have a lot of lung capacity and when you breathe deeply and intentionally, it's a little slower than what I might be saying or what Mike might be doing, move at your own pace, absolutely fine. And if at any point you stop being able to keep that intentional breath going, instead pause, drop into a child's pose, reset, absolutely fine. So remembering that you're here to get your practice, not to match anybody else. Um, and along those same lines, as we do each flow, things are gonna be a little repetitive today. We tend to do that when we do a faster class. At the beginning, each one that we do, Mike is gonna do a basic version of the flow first, and I'll be calling it as well, but so you have a visual if you need it. And then after that, he might start doing his own things. So if he occasionally has his legs fly up into the air, you don't have to copy that. <laughs> So, so if he does chin stands or handstands or whatever craziness he needs to do in his practice today, you can keep doing what we were calling prior, totally fine. Don't feel like you have to do anything crazy. Um, but I also told him to feel free to get his workout if he wants to add that kind of stuff, he's welcome to do so. So all of that being said, let's get you guys started. You're gonna start in a child's pose. I conveniently have my demonstrator today, so I don't have to try to be talking and practicing, which makes things a whole lot better for everybody. So in your child's pose, toes together, knees as wide as feels good in your body. And start with your arms long in front of you. We're gonna get really active right away in this child's pose. So spread your fingers out wide and ground down through your knuckles to so you make a solid connection of your hands to your mat. Lengthen your arms. So your arms are already engaged, elbows are off the mat, forehead is resting on the mat. And you're consciously beginning to press hips back into your heels, so you're already bringing length into your spine, as well as starting to open up through your hips. Take a deep breath in, sigh it out. Start to build ujjayi breath. All that means, seal your lips and breathe in and out through your nose. You can then begin to tighten across the back of your throat as if you're going to whisper. It's gonna allow the breath to become a little bit noisy both on the inhale and on the exhale. When you can't hear your own breath, it's usually a sign that you need to take a step back, slow down a little bit and come back to the breath. At its heart, yoga is a practice of breath first, body second. As you start to settle in here, check in with yourself and see what do you need today? Do you need to just move and not think about anything else? Do you need to challenge yourself? Or do you need to practice compassion, paying attention to what you're doing and noticing when you might need to take a step back? Whatever it is you need to get out of being here, bring that to the forefront of your thoughts. Set yourself an intention. It can be as simple as one word, presence, strength, kindness, whatever you need. Three more deep breaths right here. And then curl your toes and press your hips up and back to find a downward facing dog. You can allow yourself to pedal out your feet here, bending deep into one leg and then into the other. Little shifts in movement to just kind of check in with your body, see how you're feeling noticing where things might be a little tight, also noticing where things might feel good. This lets you know where you're gonna be able to challenge yourself and where you need to step back. And after you've kind of checked in with everything, come to stillness. Lengthen through your legs, noting that they don't have to be straight. They just need to be engaged, heels lengthening towards the mat. And spread the fingers out wide, ground down all knuckles, especially right between thumb and pointer finger. Finding length through the spine. Draw the pit of the belly in and up. Sweep your right leg up towards the ceiling. Three-legged dog. Toes aiming right down towards your mat, active through the leg. See if you can take your foot one inch higher. Draw your knee to your nose as you shift forward. Sweep it right back up, three-legged dog. Again, knee to nose, shifting forward towards a high plank, hugging in, three-legged dog. One more time, knee to your nose, hug in tight three-legged dog, step it forward, low lunge. 
Even though it's a fast flow, we start off a little slow to warm everything up. Arms can reach up, they can come behind your back, they could press into your front knee, whatever you need it to be. A little breath here, opening up through the front of the left hip. Plant your hands, step back to a high plank. And engage through the core, slow and controlled, lower all the way down to your belly. You could drop your knees if you needed to. Once you reach the mat, uncurl your toes, inhale up, cobra. Exhale, release. Inhale up, cobra, a little higher. Exhale, release. One more cobra, inhale it up. Exhale down, curl your toes, press all the way back up, high plank, downward facing dog. Sweep your left leg up to the ceiling. Again, square it up, toes aiming down towards your mat, active through your leg. Try to take it one inch higher to wake up glutes. Hug knee to nose as you shift forward. Sweep it back up, three-legged dog. Again, knee to your nose, three-legged dog. One more time, knee to your nose, this is cheetah, three-legged dog. Step it forward, low lunge. Right away, noticing, does this side feel a little bit different? Breathing here, opening up through the front of the right hip, even a little bit of opening through the chest. And then plant your hands, high plank. Nice and controlled, lower all the way down to your belly. Take a twisted cobra, gaze over the right shoulder, inhale it up and exhale to release. Little twisted cobra to the left, looking over the left shoulder. Exhale to release. One more cobra, cobra under your fingertips if you'd like. Inhale up, exhale down. High plank, nice downward facing dog. Tiptoe to the top of your mat for ragdoll. That's fit feet, hip distance apart. You can grab onto opposite elbows and let your upper body hang heavy. Head can release towards the mat. Knees could be soft here. You could shift side to side. You could sway in the upper body. Goal here is to just to release some tension in the lower back, in the shoulders, and in the neck. Just kind of seeing where you're already holding on to tension, the stuff that you carry with you from your day-to-day -day life, trying to let some of that stuff fall away before we begin to practice. Then release your mind, hands drop down to the mat and roll your way up to standing. So stacking vertebrae on top of vertebrae, feeling those joints align and then sweep your arms up to the ceiling, finding length to the sides of your body. Grab onto your left wrist or elbow, reach up and over to the right. Hips are gonna press left, really opening up to the left side of the body. Inhale to come through center, exhale, take your side bend to the other side. Now opening up the right side of the body. Come back through center, a little back bend, hands to low back or open, whatever you prefer. And then release that forward fold. First flow is gonna be our modified flow. Inhale to halfway lift, plant your hands, step back to high plank. Hug your knees in until they just barely touch the mat and lower halfway down, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, chest draws through the shoulders. Up and back, downward facing dog. You're welcome to stay with that for every single flow if you'd like. Gonna get a little bit bigger now. Top of your mat, step or float. Inhale is your half lift. Exhale, bow deeper. Inhale, stand all the way up mountain. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to half lift. Plant your hands, high plank. Your lower halfway down, chaturanga. Inhale for your upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three more rounds moving at your pace. So when you're ready, you'll step or float to the top of your mat. As you get there, halfway lift to lengthen your spine, forward fold, stand all the way up mountain on an inhale, exhale forward fold, bow deeper, inhale halfway lift, lengthen your spine, chaturanga flow. That could be just stepping to down dog, it could be that chaturanga up dog, down dog, what do you need today? Two more rounds when you're ready. So you'll come to the top of your mat with a half lift and a fold. You'll get a mountain, a forward fold, a halfway lift, and your variation of a flow. If you jump back like Mike's doing, make sure you land with soft, soft elbows. You never wanna jump and land on a solid joint. One more round when you're ready, you'll come back to the top of your mat. Half lift and fold. Mountain, forward fold. Half lift, chaturanga flow. So you get back to downward facing dog this time, we're gonna pause and check back in. Nice, I love it, I can actually see everybody. It makes it so much easier to pace. So check in now with your breath. Noticing, is it still got that rich, beautiful ujjayi? If not, try to bring it back under your control. Is your core still engaged? Put the belly into the spine and up. Steady focus, drishti, right between your heels. 
And you've got two choices here. You can either stay for five more deep breaths or you can take five frog hops, which is just shifting your weight into your hands and trying to kick yourself in the booty. So you're gonna shift forward, trying to kick yourself and come back down. You might only come two inches off the mat. You might come all the way up into a handstand. Entirely your choice. Either way, five breaths, five hops. When you're done, come to the top of your mat. When you make it to the top of your mat, you're gonna half lift, forward fold, and sit deep for Thunderbolt. Hang out till we got everybody caught in Thunderbolt. Poor Mike, you just get to hang out and be. So as you come into this Thunderbolt, notice if you've got a little sway in your lower back. If so, hug in more through the core and lengthen through the spine. Knees tracking right over toes. Nice. You're gonna take this into a fierce chair. So you're gonna sweep your arms back and lift your heels. Nice, seeing how high you can lift those heels and how deep you can sink in your hips. If it starts to shake, that's actually a good thing. That's how we know we're building muscle. It's absolutely okay. That little bit of vibration is totally fine. One more big breath, and then you'll drop your heels, come back to a normal Thunderbolt. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift to lengthen your spine, flow back to downward facing dog. Nice. Warrior one on the right. Step your right foot between your hands. Dial down the outer edge of your back foot. Sweep both arms up to the ceiling. First round, we're gonna go slow, check into the poses, make sure we know what we're feeling for before we start to move faster. So knee right over toes, nice. Really anchoring down the outer edge of the back foot, energy through the hands, even potential to add a hint of a back bend at the top of the pose if you want it. Next, exhale, plant your hands and flow back to down dog. As always, this can be just stepping to downward facing dog. If your arms start to wear out, especially if you're doing a lot of things with your shoulders, you may not need all of those extra chaturangas. When you're ready, left foot steps forward, warrior one. Again, first round, we're just checking in. How do things feel? How much space can you take up on your mat, both front to back and side to side, so you have more space in your hips to open up? Taking a little gaze up. Nice, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Now we're gonna start to move all of that to breath. So step or float to the top of your mat. When you get there, inhale to half lift, exhale fold. Inhale thunderbolt, exhale forward fold. Inhale half lift, exhale chaturanga. Inhale your upward facing, exhale is downward facing dog. Step your right foot between your hands and on an inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, chaturanga flow. And your pace may be very, very different, and that is absolutely okay. You move as you need to move. When you're ready, the left foot will step forward, warrior one. Inhale it up. Exhale to flow. Sometimes you have a sticky mat and it fights you. Only downside of the B mats. Otherwise, I'm a big fan of them, but occasionally you can get a little bit stuck. Nice. We're going to do that three more times. So top of your mat, step or float. You have a half lift and a fold. Thunderbolt. Forward fold. Halfway lift, lengthen the spine. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog, shoulders draw down. Downward facing dog. Right side, warrior one. Chaturanga flow. Worrying less about right or wrong right now. Mostly here we're worried about warming things up. Left leg forward, warrior one. Chaturanga flow. Mike here's doing chin stands. Again, that's the thing you don't have to copy if you don't feel like it. When you're ready, you get two more rounds. Top of your mat, half lift, fold, thunderbolt, forward fold. Nice, half lift, flow back to down dog. I love it. I can see everybody actually really moving to their breath. It's really, really nice. Once you get to down dog, you have a warrior one on each side with a flow between. Again, now you're really moving to your own breath pace. Trying to also stay out of Mike's way here. <laughs> nice. Beautiful. And at any time when your breath starts to get ragged, you come back to child's pose, you give yourself a pause, you give yourself a rest. You have to go to mine. There you go. Nice. There was, but we're not going to take it. Everybody, when you're ready, you're gonna to drop to a child's pose. If you're still flowing, finish your flow. When you're ready, you drop to child's pose. 
So as a teacher, we learn to watch our space. And that's one of the reasons I'm loving the fact that I can actually see people for this one. Because other times when I'm teaching to a camera, I have no idea what's going on. I don't know where people are. So I can see the one person in the room, but I couldn't see everyone. But when I have everyone on camera, as well as the person on the mat going, ah, I need a pause, we're going to take a pause. You need three more deep breaths right here. At that point, we're going to take one more sunbeam, but we're going to add some pieces to it. And it's going to be a little bit slower because I want you to feel into some stuff. So at the end of those three deep breaths, you're going to press back downward facing dog. From that downward facing dog, top of your mat, step or float. Half lift, fold, thunderbolt, sit deep, arms sweep up, pit of the belly in and up, forward fold. Nice, halfway lift, flow back down dog. This round is going to be a little bit slower because I want you to feel into some things. So step the right foot forward, warrior one. As you get here, now cactus your arms, drawing your elbows down, waking up through the shoulders, even a little hand of a back bend. Next, inhale, reach the arms back up to the ceiling. Exhale, skandasana. So bend deep into your left leg, moving to the back of your mat. Nice. Hands can be heart center, down on the mat, whatever you need. A little moment here, you can shift and move however much you might need to, to open up through your adductors, which are the big inner thigh muscles there. They're huge. They do a lot of work. So sometimes they need a little extra time to open up. And on your next breath, you're going to shift back to the top of your mat and find a twisted lunge. So left leg straight and strong, left hand down, right arm reaching up towards the ceiling. So we're opening up through the upper back here, letting all this start to wake up and open up. Chaturanga flow back, downward facing dog. And then you'll step your left foot forward, warrior one. Again, cactus the arms. Once you get there, opening up chest, heart, and throat. Re-extend, reaching arms back up to the ceiling. Skandasana towards the back of your mat. Towards the back of your mat, dropping into your right leg, the one you haven't bended before. There you go. Nice. Again, moment to stay, breathe, shift, move, whatever you need. And when you're ready, you come to the top of your mat, twisted lunge. Now, right hand down, left hand up. Again, opening up through the upper back, getting that twisting motion, trying to make sure we're working our spine and our bodies in all planes of motion. And then chaturanga flow back, downward facing dog. Nice. Deep breath in, open mouth, sigh out. Let that breath go for a moment. And then come back to deliberate ujjayi breath. Nice. So the rest of our flow will be a little bit more moderately paced. We take those first few flows really quick to get your heart rate up, get you warmed up, get you ready to move into some deeper mo movement. So now as you're ready, top of your mat, step or floats. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Sit deep, thunderbolts. Next, exhale, sweep your right arm back for an open twist. Hips stay nice and square to the front of your mat. On an inhale, you'll come through center. Exhale, open twist to the left. Come back through center, forward fold. Walk your feet to hip distance apart. Take your first two fingers, wrap them around your big toes and use your arms to draw yourself a little deeper into your fold. Let your head release, shake it out if you need to. Release your toes, crow. So Mike here's gonna go into crow. I'm gonna give you an alternative. If crow is something that you're not comfortable with, which is just planting the hands, knees high up the arms, toes drawing towards each other, you can take the exact same shape like a boat so coming down onto your booty, drawing the knees way high up the elbows and getting active through the arms and the core. Either one you want, you're gonna stay for another two deep breaths. And then maybe you shoot it back to Chaturanga or you can walk it back and find your way to downward facing dog, whatever you wanna play with. And anytime you start to play with shooting it back, know you're gonna belly flop the first few times you try it. It's absolutely okay. It's just part of the process. So if your right leg up to the ceiling, take your right knee and tap your right elbow as you come into a plank. Sweep it back up, three-legged dog. Draw that knee across your body. Now tap the left elbow, three-legged dog. Bend your knee, open your hip, do not flip. You're just gonna stay here and enjoy the stretch for this round. Nice. Step your right foot between your hands, high crescent. So it's like a warrior one, but you're up high on your back toes. So all 10 toes are facing the front of your mat, arms sweep up. Bring one hand to your belly, one hand to your lower back. Bend your back knee deep until you feel that pelvis get really neutral. You wanna keep the pelvis neutral as you begin to re-extend the back leg. It may not get straight, that's okay. It should get really intense to the front of the left thigh. That's what we're looking for. 
And then from here, we're gonna take it into an open twist, right arm back, left arm forward. Nice, beautiful. Unwind everything to warrior two. Shifting all the way around, grounding down the outer edge of the left foot, energy fingertip to fingertip, trying to stack shoulders right over hips. So we'll pull back just a little bit, there you go, yeah. Nice, reverse your warrior, flip your front palm, reach up and back. Extended side angle, right arm comes down, left arm reaches up and over. That arm could rest on the thigh or reach towards the back of the room, whichever you need. Warrior two, chaturanga flow. Always remembering that when I say chaturanga flow, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to take the chaturanga. As you make it back to downward facing dog, left leg sweeps up to the ceiling, tap the left elbow. Three-legged dog, draw it across your body, tap the right elbow. Three-legged dog, bend the knee, open the hip, just get some movement here, a nice big stretch, opening up the front of the hip, and then step it forward, high crescent, all 10 toes facing towards the top of your mat. So again, we're gonna take this little, we call self-assist. So one hand to the belly, one hand to the lower back, bend the back knee deep until you feel the pelvis drop and get nice and neutral. Keeping that pelvis neutral, begin to re-extend the back leg. Both arms sweep back up. Open twist, left arm back, right arm forward. Beautiful, feel that reach, 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 fingertip to fingertip. Unwind, warrior two. Front knee tracking towards the pinky edge of your front foot so that knee stays nice and safe. Flip your front palm, reverse your warrior. Extended side angle. Finding here length and rotation, bottom ribs trying to peek towards the ceiling. Warrior two, chaturanga flow. Three deep breaths in your downward facing dog. And we're gonna take essentially the same thing, but every posture is gonna get a little bit bigger. So our twists are gonna become closed. We're gonna add on a couple of little things, but we're roughly gonna stay in the same ballpark. So the end of those three deep breaths, top of your mat, step or float. Inhale to half lift, exhale, bow deeper. Thunderbolts, sit nice and deep. Hands to heart center, start to twist to the right. Left elbow coming either to the inside of the left leg or the outside of the right leg. Knees trying to stay parallel, really lengthening to find more twist. On an inhale, come through center. Exhale, take your twist to the other side. Nice. Come back through center, forward fold. Walk your feet back out to hip distance. This time, slide your palms underneath your feet from the front all the way up to the wrist crease. Soften your knees. Let your head release, it can shake out, yes, no, maybe. And again, actively use the arms to draw yourself deeper into the fold here. Not only getting this through hamstrings, but also potentially through the sides of the body, through the low back, depending upon where you're tight is where you're gonna feel this. You're gonna release your feet, you have another chance to take a crow, this will be your last one. So I'm gonna talk through ways to advance crow, so either playing with crow, or if you're really feeling solid in crow, you can try to take your toes and tap the backs of your wrists. So those legs will start to extend, taking toes to the backs of the wrists. I'm not sure if Mike's gonna try this on or not. He's fine either way. <laughs> Give another breath or two. When you're ready, you'll flow back to down dog, whether that's shooting it back, crawling it back, or just stepping to downward facing dog. Wherever you happen to be is totally fine. Always remembering taking a child's pose and coming back to breath is actually a really, really solid thing. It means that you are respecting your own practice and your own body. So don't be afraid to do that. Right leg comes up to the ceiling. Again, tap your right elbow. If you're crazy and need more, add a push-up. Three-legged dog. Draw it across your body, tap the opposite elbow. Three-legged dog. Bend your knee, open your hip. This time you have the option to flip your dog if you would like. That foot gets heavy, comes all the way over. You're gonna plant both feet really strong. Lift up through your hips. Take that right arm, keep reaching more to the right so you open up more through your chest. That's it, nice. Come back around, three-legged dog. We're gonna to come to a fallen triangle. So that right knee is gonna come across towards the left elbow and then kick all the way through. Left arm reaches up. Awesome, breathe. One more breath right here. Three-legged dog. High crescent, step it forward. No self-assist this time. Just remembering that feeling that we built when we took the self-assist. And then hands come to heart center and you begin to twist to the right. Left elbow outside, right knee. Every inhale, we find more length through the spine. Every exhale, a little deeper rotation. Beautiful. Unwind, warrior two. Flip your front palm. On an inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, come to extended side angle. 
three rounds to flow like this. Inhale, reverse it up and back. Exhale, extended side angle. Just continuing to flow like this. Two more rounds to breath. Inhale is the reverse. Exhale is the extend. Steady, easy breath. Inhale to reverse. Exhale to extend. A warrior two. Chaturanga flow. You guys are doing great. You're already at the halfway point. So know that if you're feeling tired, you should be feeling tired by this point. So you're doing great. Left leg's gonna come up to the ceiling. Tap that left elbow. Three-legged dog. Tap the right elbow. Three-legged dog. Bend your knee, open your hips, stay or flip. Entirely your choice where you need to go in any given moment. Beautiful, enjoy that flip dog. When you're complete, you'll come back around a three-legged dog and find your fallen triangle. Left foot kicking all the way across to the right hand and then right hand reaches up to the ceiling. Awesome, three-legged dog. Step it forward, high crescent. Again, lengthen through that back leg, straight, strong, and stable. If you're wobbly, take your feet wider. So picturing railroad tracks here. Hands to heart center, twist. Right elbow outside, left knee. Finding length through the spine, rotation through the spine and then unwind warrior two. Get established first, then on an inhale, flip your front palm, reverse your warrior. Exhale, extended side angle. Three more rounds to flow to breath. Inhale for reverse and exhale to extend. So oftentimes we think of a fast flow as being really crazy fast, but if your breath is deep, that full inhale, full exhale, it doesn't have to be at that panicked pace. So when things start to feel like they're going too fast, check in with your own breath and what you need your breath to be doing. Once you've gotten three full rounds, you'll come back to a warrior two, flow back to down dog. And we're again gonna drop to child's pose for a couple of breaths. If you're feeling really, really charged up, you can stay in down dog or you can take it to a headstand for a couple of breaths. Everyone's practice is different. So if you're needing to still dial things up, you've got other options. I think Mike's gonna go into a headstand but recognizing that the goal in yoga is to learn to read what's happening within ourselves and learning to be okay with whatever we find, that it doesn't mean anything about us. It doesn't say that we're a good or a bad person. All it says is that in this moment, I need rest and I need to honor that. Or in this moment, I do need to challenge myself and I need to honor that. If you've left downward facing dog, you're gonna come back to it. So either from your child's pose or your headstand, whatever you might be in. Nice. Top of your mat, step or float. Halfway lift, forward fold, thunderbolt. Float your left foot two inches off your mat. So you're just sitting deeper into that chair or that thunderbolt. Then left leg crosses over, left arm winds under eagle. Toes can be on the mat. I like to put my toes on the mat. It lets me anchor in, sit deeper. I get more out of the pose. Totally okay. Draw your elbows away and up. Hands away from your face. Breathe. One more breath to sit a little deeper. Unwind, reach all the way up to the ceiling. Get length to the sides of your body. Unwind everything, foot two, stand all the way up. There you go. Sit deep, thunderbolt. Float your right foot two inches off the mat. Cross it all the way over so you're winding your legs together. Wind the right arm under, so right leg over, right arm under, sitting as deep as you can. Everything is trying to hug into your center line, making this tiny little shape here as compressed as you can make your body. One more big breath. Unwind to mountain, stand all the way up. You can add a back bend if it feels good to you right here. And then draw your hands to heart center. Steady focus right in front of you, steady drishti. So we just compressed everything, now we're gonna expand everything. So we're gonna take a dancer. Take your left hand, reach back, nice open arms or palm facing out, grab the inside of your foot. It's gonna give you a lot more ability to expand if you grab the inside of the foot rather than the outside. Now everything is kicking away and up. So this is technically a back bend. So we're not tipping forward, we're trying to lift up. There'll be some tip, but we're trying not to emphasize that. Give it one more breath to expand as big as you can. And then let that go, come back to mountain. Draw your hands back to heart center, get restable. We always stabilize between sides, so both sides have the same opportunity for success. Right arm reaches back, big open reach. Grab the inside of the right foot, kick into your hand. He's driving down through the standing leg, engage through the core. Beautiful. 
Come back to mountain and draw your hands to heart center. Two deep breaths. And start to connect a couple of balances here. Step your left leg up in front of you as if you were stepping on a box. Both arms reach up towards the ceiling. Flex the left foot. Nice. Press it back behind you, airplane. Find some lift through your chest here. Nice. Step it back up in front of you, standing leg raise. You can begin to extend the leg if you would like. Press it back, airplane. You can put a soft bend in your knee as you transition. It'll make it a little smoother. And again, step it up in front of you. You can extend the leg long if you'd like. Arms reach up. Press it back, airplane. Nice. One more round. Step that leg up in front of you and cross it into figure four. Ankle over knee, hands to heart center. Sit really deep like you were sitting in a chair. So the lower your center of gravity goes, the easier the pose becomes. You can stay right here. You could bring hands to the mat to get a stretch. You could take it to an arm balance if you'd like, or you could take it to a toe sit, which is dropping down onto your toes. Maybe hands come off the mat. Mine never do. I don't have that balance. I try. It's very wobbly. You take it wherever you need to go with it. You got three deep breaths to just play here to get what you need to get. When you're complete, you're going to forward fold and let that release. And shake it off if you need to. Inhale to halfway lift, exhale, fold. Stand all the way back up mountain. Hands back to heart center. Step your right leg up in front of you like you were stepping on a box. Arms reach up, foot flexes, active and engaged. Press it back to find airplane. Trying to keep some lift in the chest, a feeling of upward facing dog in your chest. Standing leg raise, step it up in front of you. Maybe it extends long if you want that little extra add on. Press it back, airplane. And again, standing leg raise, stepping it up in front of you. Last airplane, press it back. Standing leg raise to figure four, ankle over knee, hands to heart center. You don't have to take the same variation on both sides. Contrary to popular belief, it will not make you walk in circles. So you can take whatever you need on this side. If you want the arm balance, a toe sit, a forward fold, or just staying right here, it's a great pose in and of itself. We don't always need to add on. Release, forward fold, let that go. Half lift, forward fold, one more balance. Mountain stand all the way up, hands to heart center, find your drishti. This last balance, we're just gonna take a simple tree. So for tree, drawing your left foot up, toes could stay on the mat if your balance is struggling, could press into your shin, could come all the way up and press into your thigh. Standing leg presses back into the working leg just as hard as the working leg presses into the standing leg. Hands can start at heart center and then go wherever you want. They can reach up. You can back bend, side bend, fold, twist, come up onto toes, play a little here. Recognizing that this section of our class in some practices is referred to as equanimity, specifically in the Baptiste practice. And it's because the idea is not to stand perfectly on one foot, because it doesn't really serve us all that well on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, it's good for you, but it's not fundamental. But the ability to fall out of a pose and come back and try it again, the ability to push yourself to an edge, to not get frustrated when something doesn't work, but to just begin again, begin again, begin again. That serves us all the time. Every day and everything we do, if we are learning, we're going to mess up, we're gonna fall. When you're ready, try the second side. But we don't get stronger if we don't experiment and explore. So we have to be okay with the idea of failure. We have to recognize that failure isn't an ending. Failure is a step along a process. Because every single time we fail, we learn something about ourselves. In this instance, about our physicality, we learn to adapt, we grow stronger. Nice. When you feel like you've played enough on this side, you'll come back to mountain, give yourself a moment with hands at heart center to just reconnect. And then we're gonna rebuild breath and movement with some very simple movement. So on an inhale, sweep your arms up to the ceiling, reaching up, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, just fold. Inhale, up mountain. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale, mountain. Exhale, fold. Finally adding on, inhale, half lift. Exhale, flow back to downward facing dog. You have one more standing series, that's all. Step your right foot forward, warrior two. Reaching fingertip to fingertip. Breathe. Sky archer, straighten your right leg, grab your right wrist, reach up and back. So right here, we're building length along the right side of the body. Now we're gonna take it to triangle and I want you to think about trying to keep that length on the right side of the body, even as you're bowing in that direction. So release your grip, right hand starts to reach down towards the mat, yep. If you happen to have a block nearby, it can give you a little bit more height. If you don't have a block nearby, totally fine. That right hand can just come to the inside of your front leg and press into the leg to help yourself find a little rotation. Either one is totally fine. We don't always have blocks available to us at home. Every inhale, you're finding more length. Every exhale, finding a deeper rotation. Now we're gonna add on, top arm is gonna reach beside your ear towards the top of your mat. Bottom arm is gonna reach up to join it. So now both arms are reaching towards the top of your mat. Your obliques should be screaming at you. Possibly even adductors. Give it one more big breath and then use your obliques to draw yourself all the way up to standing. Turn all 10 toes in, wide-legged forward fold. Just bowing forward. So this right here is an awesome pose, just like this. You don't need to add anything to it. But if you are not feeling enough here, you can walk your legs out to a side split. You can bend deep into each leg, playing with those skandasanas like we touched on at the start of class. You could take a headstand. Lots of options you can play with here, but you got about five breaths to do whatever you feel like you need to do. At the end of those breaths, you'll bring your hands to your hips, lengthen out to come to standing. So that's lengthen the spine to draw yourself up. That's what we mean when we say that, rather than rolling up. Nice, so engaging through the core to draw yourself all the way to standing, nice. From here, we're gonna to start to set our feet up towards pyramid, but don't go anywhere yet. You're just gonna turn your right toes towards the top of your mat, step your left foot about halfway in and a little bit more to the left. So by the time you're done, your hips should be really square to the top of your mat. Reach both arms up towards the ceiling. You're gonna take an open twist, right arm back, left arm forward. <laughs> there you go, open twist. Left arm starts to reach forward and down. We're coming into a revolved pyramid here. So again, your hand could land on a block. I don't use a block here. I bring my left hand to the outside of my right foot. It's actually a leg, it's usually outside my knee. And I use that to get a twist and a rotation. Anchor down the outer edge of your back foot. So both legs are straight and strong here. Nice. Now just bow forward over that front leg. Everything else stays the same. You're just bowing forward over the front leg. This is pyramid. Hands might make it to the mat. If they don't, you can take your hands and frame your front leg. So squeezing in rather than pressing back. So we're not putting any pressure on the knee. We're squeezing in, but giving ourselves a little connection, a little stability. So our hamstrings don't try to revolt on us. Give it one more breath here. And then you're gonna take it to a standing split. Shift all of your weight into your right leg. Left leg's gonna to start to sweep up to the ceiling. So we call this standing split. Most of us look more like this. It's more like a standing L, that's absolutely okay. Get engaged through the back leg. Toes aiming down towards your mat. Let your head release. If you want to play, walk your hands in to grab onto your standing foot and play with balance. Or you could plant your hands and switch kick, playing with coming up into a handstand. Entirely up to you, whatever you wanna play with. You got another breath or two. When you're ready to move on, you'll plant your hands, step back to a high plank. Nice. You only have one more side. You are nearly done. Two deep breaths right here in your high plank and then make your way to down dog however you need to right now. Nice. Step your left foot forward, warrior two. Almost done. You're almost off your feet. Sometimes it helps to know how much you got left. Straighten that, oops, straighten that front leg, take it into Sky Archer, almost left to pose out there. Opening up through the left side of the body, nice. And then into full triangle. Left hand reaching down towards the mat or that block or the outside of your leg or the inside of your leg, whatever you need. Finding length through the sides of the body, really trying to open up through the sides here. Reach both arms towards the top of your mat, waking up through the obliques. Be okay if it gets shaky and wobbly, it happens all the time. Draw yourself all the way up. 
I'm going to be nice and not make you guys do goddess. So instead, you're going to step your feet in and find that pyramid. So square your hips up to the top of your mat, right foot steps forward, and then a little bit more to the right. So your stance is shorter. Both arms reach up towards the ceiling. Open twist, left arm back, right arm forward into your revolved pyramid. Right hand comes down to the outside of the leg or onto a block, whatever you can more comfortably reach, whatever is accessible to you right now. Anchoring down the outer edge of that back foot. So you're straight and strong through both legs. So trying to build more rotation through the torso here. Pyramid bowing over the front leg. Let your head hang heavy. And lengthening through both legs, hands wherever they need to be, framing the leg or pressing into the floor or a block. And then finally standing splits, shifting into your left leg. Right leg sweeps up to the ceiling. And give yourself a moment to just get established, really squaring up, toes aiming down towards the mat. We tend to want to open up the hips, keep them square, and then play. Hands can walk in and grab onto your standing leg for balance. They could plant into the mat and let you kick up to play towards a handstand, or you stay right where you are, whatever you need. Plant your hands, step it back, high plank. Breathe. Either stay right here in high plank or reach your right arm forward and float your left leg off the mat for a little cross body work here. And if you've taken the cross body work, change sides. If you're still in plank, just stay in plank and breathe. That's still just as valuable. Nice, plant everything and then with control, lower down to your belly. So trying to bring in as much control as possible into the transition. Awesome, once you make it to your belly, Take your arms long by your sides, palms face down. On an inhale, we're gonna keep the hands planted for the first one, so drive your palms into the mat as you lift chest and legs off the mat. Hug heels towards each other, so a little partial locust here. And then exhale, release all the way back down. Take one cheek to the mat. Next one, we're gonna float hands off as well. So on an inhale, we'll float everything off the mat. Lengthen through your neck so you're not craning up or letting your head hang down towards the mat, really lengthening through the neck. Exhale, release other cheek to the mat. Nice. And you're either gonna stay right here with locust or you're gonna bend your knees, reach back, grab onto the tops of your feet or your ankles, and then kick into your hands for a floor bow. So either staying with locust or kicking into your hands. So the goal here is that your legs are doing all of the work. So your legs are kicking in here, which is drawing the chest off the mat. This might be a very small pose for you. It might be a very big pose. You might feel a little rock forward and back as you breathe because that belly fills and empties. One more big breath. And then release all the way down. Let your hips kind of rock a little side to side. Feet could windshield wiper side to side if you like. Just letting the low back release some. And then take your legs long on the mats. We're gonna take a few more back bends where we're first gonna open up our shoulders just because we're in the perfect position to do so. So take your right arm, you're gonna either reach it straight out to the side or you're gonna take it like a cactus wing, so a bent elbow. And then keeping that shoulder anchored onto the mat, you're gonna roll onto your right side. So that left leg could swing behind you, it could plant on the mat in front of you. Left arm could plant on the mat or reach behind you. Goal here is to feel this right through here. So if you've been doing a lot of chaturangas, if you've been doing a lot of things that access this area, the fronts of the shoulders, this can be really intense. It can even start to burn a little. You might feel tingling in your fingers. This area gets really, really congested. So trying to open it up like this is very important to overall health. Strangely enough, it tends to help with pain between your shoulder blades. So the conversation for another time, just know that it does help. Three more nice big breaths here, being very deliberate about that breath, slowing it down a little bit. At the end of your three breaths, change sides. So you move when you feel ready to move. Always remember if you find a pose like this is really working for you, if you need to stay and hang out there longer, it's okay. It's not gonna kill you to miss a couple of poses. So if you find something that works for you, own that. Five more deep breaths. Consciously count them. The inhale and the exhale. When 
when you are complete in five breaths, you release onto your belly and pause a moment there. You can turn a cheek to the mat or stack your hands under your forehead, whatever you need, but just give yourself a moment to rest there, to let that resonate. Most of us have so much tension in our shoulders that that pose can almost make you feel a little nauseous because it can be really intense. Now that you've let that release some, you're gonna just flip all the way over onto your back. No fancy yoga move here. You're just gonna flip over like a pancake. We're gonna start with bridge. We're gonna take a couple of bridges, but we will get to wheel if you are a wheel junkie. So you're gonna start here in bridge, feet aiming directly towards the back of your mat. Most of us tend to turn our feet out. And when we try to get our feet parallel, we feel like we're pigeon toeing. But if your feet are parallel, you've got more access to more power. It's gonna give you more strength and it's gonna protect you more. Drive your heels into your mat to lift your hips. You can walk your shoulders closer together, taking a bind behind your back if you'd like and driving those triceps into your mat. Two more big breaths. Every inhale, lifting a little higher. Exhale to stay and hug in. With that second exhale, release the bind, come all the way back down. From this point forward, I'm gonna be giving you guys options. You can stay right here with bridge, or for the next bridge, you can take it as a one-legged bridge, in which case you're gonna center that left foot, press your right foot up towards the ceiling, and then on an inhale, lift. And you got about two more big breaths here. Exhale, release all the way back down. So before you lift your hips, center your foot, point the left foot straight up to the ceiling with your hips on the ground. Now one-legged, you're gonna drive the right heel into the mat to lift your hips. Clarifying that it does make a difference whether that foot is lifted before or after you lift your hips. It becomes a lot harder if the foot's already off the ground and you're getting that drive up from just one leg. Exhale, release all the way back down. So again, you're welcome to stay in bridge. Now coming back to two-legged bridges, or if you'd like, we're gonna take three more back bends. You can take these as wheels. So you can either repeat what we just did, double leg bridge, single leg bridge, single leg bridge, or you can start to move up into wheels. When you're ready, lift your hips. Nice. And stay right here if you'd like. And then exhale, release all the way back down. Two more back bends, bridge or wheel. Now, once you lift up into wheel, if you'd like, you can also play with this one being one-legged. I don't recommend pressing up with just one leg on this one. Or you can add little wheel push-ups like Mike's doing if you'd like. Then exhale, release. If you've been doing wheels, you might want to shake out your wrists for a moment. You've got one more back bend. Bridge, wheel, whatever you need it to be. Lift it up. Give it five full breaths to be all in to whatever you choose. Awesome. At the end of those five full breaths, you'll release all the way back down and find reclined butterfly, which is the soles of your feet to touch, knees dropped open. So your legs are like a butterfly and you're reclined back. That's the name. Also called Supta Baddha Konasana, which is just fun to say. Your arms can be resting somewhere on your body, heart and belly or hips, or they can be open wide, whatever feels more natural for you. Seems interesting to note what you do by default. Arms on the body are usually very protective. It's that you want to close in. It's that you're needing a little bit of connection and a little bit of support. Arms open is usually that complete feeling of surrender. And we take those poses instinctively. So sometimes it's just interesting to see what do you default to? Where do you go by, na by nature? Eyes can close now if you'd like. Just taking a moment here to check in with yourself. How do you feel within your body? How is your breath? It's usually ragged after back bends, so get it deliberately under your control again. And now again, eyes can stay closed. Just hug your knees into your chest. Bring a little hug here. You could take it to happy baby, grabbing onto the soles of your feet or the backs of your thighs. Knees are trying to drive to the outsides of your shoulders. You can rock side to side. You can straighten one leg. You can straighten the other, whatever you need. And from here, we're gonna move into the inversion of your choice. So I'm gonna give you some options. If you are not familiar with inversions, I'm going to recommend you take waterfall, which I think is where Mike's going anyway. That's placing your hands or anything you have nearby underneath your sacrum and pointing your feet up towards the ceiling. So it can just be your hands, it's absolutely okay. If you have something else nearby, like a block or a pillow or something, feel free to use it. If you are already familiar with shoulder stand and headstand, those are also options. 
Both of those are more physically challenging postures with a lot of delicate areas being vulnerable in those poses. So they're not ones I feel very comfortable recommending to someone from a distance like this. So if you're not familiar with those, take a waterfall. This is still a really powerful inversion. It's just a calming inversion rather than an activating inversion. But you still have feet overhead, which is the entire purpose of an inversion, is to just flip things upside down. So it's still doing the same job. Got three more breaths to be right here. The end of those three breaths, if you did choose to take a headstand, you're gonna come down and take a couple of breaths in a child's pose to let yourself recover from that. If you are in a shoulder stand, you would move into a plow and a deaf man's. Again, it's part of that transition and then you'll roll back down. If you're in waterfall, you can stay right where you are. Or if you have a block underneath your sacrum, you could take your legs long on the mat with that block under the sacrum. For a lot of this, that feels really, really good to open up through the front of the hips. If it doesn't feel good in your body, just let it go. You don't need to take it. And then from wherever you happen to be, You'll slide any blocks or things out of the way. You're gonna come onto your back. We're gonna set up for a twist. So for this twist, you're gonna shift your hips two inches to the right. So you're gonna shift them a little off center, cross your right leg over your left and let your legs drop to the left, gaze to the right. If that made no sense to you, legs go left, gaze goes right. It's as simple as that. Usually at this portion of class, we stop really understanding any words. We start to drift away and get towards that Shavasana brain and that's absolutely okay. Give it two big cleansing breaths. So big inhale, a little pause at the top and a sigh out of surrender. Then you're just gonna switch out that twist. So coming through center, your hips are gonna shift a little off center left. Knees are gonna drop to the right with that left leg crossing over and taking your gaze away from your legs. Let that pose land in your body for a breath or two and then give it two big cleansing breaths. It's that big inhale, the pause and the sigh. Letting things release a little. Nice. And come back through center. Got two options for where we're gonna go next. You can stay on your back if you prefer and take a figure four, which we have Mike demonstrate briefly, which is crossing right leg over left, reaching through that gap in your right leg to grab the front of the left shin or the back of the left thigh and hugging in. If that is not intense enough for you, you can flip over and take a pigeon instead. Which I suspect Mike is gonna go into next by default. So I don't have to demonstrate, perfect. Either one is fine. Both of these get into your hips. It's just a matter of what allows you to get a little deeper. So in that pigeon, you're trying to take your right shin as much towards the top of your mat and parallel as possible. It may not be fully parallel. It may be kind of angled in. That's okay. But we're trying to avoid rolling off onto the right hips. You can see here, my, my body is way off to the right. That's not going to get me a whole lot if I bow forward from here. I'm going to lift and try to center myself over that leg and then walk forward. That's gonna let me actually get into my hip. You can take three more big breaths. You're gonna let each exhale take longer than your inhale, almost twice the length of your inhale. Just gonna allow that body to start to release more, let go a little more fully. The end of three breaths, you're just gonna change sides. So if you're in figure four, just uncross and recross. If you're in pigeon, you can step to down dog or just to all fours or even just swing your legs around, whatever you need to take. And when you find whatever pose you need to take on this side, you can give yourself a moment or two to settle in, to fidget and adjust until you find that posture. And then once it starts to land, let yourself surrender into it. Again, lengthening those exhales so you find a deeper release.
At the end of this, you'll start to draw yourself up. You begin to make your way towards your version of Shavasana. If as you're going there, you realize there's some areas of your body that haven't been tended. We're all different. We all hold tension differently. So it's not uncommon to feel like there's some area that hasn't been addressed. Feel free to take an extra stretch or some extra movement to let those areas release so that you'll be able to accept surrender. And then find your way into your Shavasana shape. That can be just like this, arms and legs wide. For some people, that's a lot of tension on your lower back. And if that's the case, you can bring the soles of your feet to touch, or you could plant your feet on your mat, or even take a blanket and put it underneath your knees. So there's just a little bit of a bend into your legs. It'll take some of that pressure off of your lower back. And then you can close your eyes. Give yourself permission to not do anything. That's a big deal in our society, to be allowed to be still to recognize that you've earned this, you've worked really, really hard, which means you are allowed to take these few moments of just peace, where there's no one you need to take care of, there's nothing you need to do, and nothing you need to change. You are absolutely perfect in this moment. Take a deep breath in, and sigh out your practice, Shavasana. And take a deep breath in, sigh it out. Bring some easy movements back to your body. Wiggle fingers, wiggle toes. Stretch yourself out long on your mat, fingertips to toes. And curl yourself onto one side. And pause here for a moment. We always shift from Shavasana, which is also called corpse pose. That's what it means. So we shift from that corpse pose into a fetal pose. And it is a reminder that we get to remake ourselves every time we practice. We learn something about ourselves. We reestablish our equanimity. We reestablish our strength. When we wake up, we're fresh. We're new. When you're ready, come to a comfortable seat. You can leave your eyes closed if you'd like. And then draw your hands to heart center. So in the spirit of that waking up new and refreshed, we end our classes with what is traditionally a greeting. The light within me sees, honors, and respects the light within each and every one of you. Open our eyes and together we say, namaste. namaste. Thank you all so much for joining me this morning.